the shaping machine. That's shaping the neck. Uh, yeah, look at that. Taking a little bit off the sides. And that steel joint. and get all the clearances like spot on perfect as it makes its way around. Watch when it comes up to the head stop. It's gonna take a little bit more off. Woo! Right there, see that little piece? Come right off there. In the front with this machine by hand. So someone goes along and it moves down the track at such a precise, you know, interval that we're able to accurately get a type of So they do all their fret work, fret all the various size frets, I guess. You can see this, here we go. Here's the top of the fret. You can see the little edges here. That's what, I guess, helps hold it in once it gets in. And this machine, they use where they set these guys up and the neck goes along and they press in all the frets by hand. I guess a pretty bad practical joke to play on the person that works this machine you should come here early and you mix all these up. How, look at this, how long would it take to put all those back in the right number, huh? That would be... See the way my crazy mind works? The innovative machine here at Taylor for help milling the necks of guitar. the neck blanks. Uh, Bob Taylor and his team were the um, were the ones, the pioneers who developed a lot of this technology based off of, I guess, the needs of the time and what they their vision. And they came up with a lot of it. You see the next line all behind us, and uh, the machine's not running right now. But when it is, it's going to mill these necks. now some of the necks that have just come around and they have the frets pressed into them, they have the nut pressed in, and they have the truss rod adjustment that you can see here to, uh, to, to adjust the neck so it doesn't bow. And um, some of these are going to go off and get, I guess, get milled again to get the headstock cut out perfectly and um, more nice inlays. So this is the uh, side bending room here at Taylor Guitars. You can see that's kind of cool. the machines that go into bending sides. You can see how that's working right now, moving very slowly 
in bending the wood around a, a given shape blank, I guess that is, or mold, so to speak. Look how cool that is. You can see the, uh, as I zoom in, that there's three different settings, fast, medium, and slow on this machine. So depending on the wood, it could bend, and it's also heating. It's actually giving off heat. It's getting hot. You can see the little conveyor belt there turning to bend that around, that shape. And they could set that for, you know, again, depending on the wood. And just like everything else here at Taylor, it's like they have all these settings and everything just down to just an absolute science. Yeah, here's some of the... Uh, some of the uh, sides of the guitars that are coming off cooling and there you can see a nice koa look at that they're taking the protective paper off and you have the sides beautiful koa wood sides look at that that is beautiful thank you thank you so much yeah here you see stacks of looks like some rosewood or that walnut actually, maybe. Looks like is that coca bolo? Rosewood. Rosewood. This is rosewood on the right here is actually the two hundreds. It's a rosewood veneer. Rosewood okay. veneer. Oh, it's a veneer. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Here's a here's a coca bolo right here. What's that called? And also a walnut. It's coca bolo. Coca Bolo. So the veneer, veneers don't have to do all the. Points. Well, the veneer it has oh, like a uh, that's, that's a thin a, piece of wood right. over another one. This is a solid piece. And right now that bracing's drying. Uh, yeah, we're putting that curving on right here. Here you see some more sides of the guitars and uh, the technology that they're using to dry it. Yeah, we're putting we're putting uh, this this on right here, this curving right here. And that's so that when you put the top on and the back on, you can have an edge right here that you can glue it to. Instead of just the side, ah. you can zoom and see the brown piece right there is just the side, the actual thickness of the side. Right. And that's the curving that we put on, so it more than doubles that space. Cool. So, and even the yeah, um, so the clothespin, they're actually that? using this like a metal kind of pseudo clothespin. It's actually a tailor design um, to help, yeah. <laughs> to help that in the drying process and here you see how many they have to use just on that coco ball of wood on those two uh, sides there and here's one that's drying on uh, walnut that's stacked behind it <laughs> bent and then they're getting ready for the next step look at some of these woods wow, absolutely that. beautiful that's what I want I like that Tim Gilberg likes this one right here that looks like that, that most ebony one? <laughs> yeah Look at this, and they just have, you know. We're gonna go downstairs and see some front and backs and what it looks like. So this is the bracing um, that obviously goes on once the front part's been glued on to the purfling. We have to put the bracing in. This bracing's done according to a grid, depending on what size of guitar it's gonna be. Um, you know, here you see, uh, you know, the cross. You see the bridge plate, everything. Some of the heel block up here too. So we actually use a template, and then once we've laid this wood down and glued it down, it goes into these machines. And these machines basically suck all the air out and dry it over a period of six minutes. Wow. So they suck all the air out and dry. All these are glued on, I assume. Yeah. All the, all the braces are glued on, and that's what gives the helps to give the uh, guitar its strength and also the complexity or the, the type of the bracing system also affects the tone of the guitar and obviously just another thing here at Taylor that they have down to a science.